But if you would tell me who I am, at least take the trouble to discover what I have been. should look at Shirley Chisholm as one who sought and received a very good education. But she used her education not just for herself. She forgot about her own circumstances, her own problems, and got involved in the problems and circumstances of others. In our country at this moment, then for the first time in the history of this nation, a person of color and a woman at that is running for the highest office of this land and it's a wonderful thing to know that in spite of the many obstacles in my path that there's such a large large cross section of America who is behind me and saying why not why not dare to dream like so many of us have dreamt before me in 1969 former congresswoman Shirley Chisholm became the first black woman elected to Congress as a Democrat to represent the mostly black and Hispanic residents in Brooklyn, New York. During her political career in Congress, Ms. Chisholm gained a strong national reputation for fighting for working people. This often meant criticism, but she didn't back down. I did not come to Congress to behave myself and stay away from explosive issues so I can keep coming back. She stood out, like I said, because she was um uh, very strong, uh, strong-willed. Uh, she was very articulate in her uh, what she would say. She was um, uh, respected uh, tremendously uh, by uh, both white and black, really, because of her courageousness. Um, so I, I just think she opened the, opened the door for for actually females into the political arena, not just for black females, but I mean female white and black because of her, uh, her strong stance on issues and um, uh, her willingness to take a chance. Chisholm shot back at critics who wanted her to support different bills she felt would hurt her district. During one battle she publicly defended her position saying, I'm unbought and unbossed. This statement became a popular slogan others copied and described how she would conduct her political career and business. She meant she was not going to be controlled. Unbought and unbossed is the title of a book she published. In her typical style, Chisholm said, Of my two handicaps, being female put many more obstacles in my path than being black. Racism is so universal in this country, so widespread and deep-seated, that it is invisible because it is so normal. Some contend that her courage to express her views about what she said was a systematic discrimination against blacks caused her political trouble. She ran for elected office and she got elected. She emerged as a strong woman she went places where women was not supposed to go, serve on committees where women weren't supposed to serve. And she had the courage, nothing but raw courage, to say, yes, I'm a woman, but I'm also a leader. To her credit, Ms. Chisholm didn't let the constant media attention distract her from the work her constituents elected her to do. 
Chisholm was born on November 30, 1924 in Brooklyn, New York. Her parents were strict but loving. When Chisholm was a small child, her parents sent her and her three sisters to live with their grandmother on the West Indian island of Barbados. They felt this was a more nurturing environment. Surrounded by loving relatives, Chisholm responded to this affection. At just four years old, she was an avid reader. This is where she started her education on the island in a one-room schoolhouse. Chisholm's grandmother and her teachers encouraged her to study. In 1931, she left the peaceful environment in Barbados when her parents brought her back home to Brooklyn. Chisholm's father was interested in political issues and their many discussions was her first introduction to politics. She continued to excel in school and in 1942 graduated from Girls High. Although she won a scholarship to Vassar, she chose Brooklyn College and stayed home. In a political science class, Chisholm's professor told her she had the talent for politics and encouraged her to go into this profession. After graduating with honors in sociology, Chisholm worked as a teacher's aide in Harlem. After seven years, she rose to be one of the top decision makers at the Mount Calvary Child Care Center. Chisholm's interest in politics grew. In 1946, she got her first taste of the real world of politics when she worked on the successful campaign of a black judge in New York. To find out the needs of working people, she was active in neighborhood groups and national organizations like the NAACP. In 1949, she married Conrad Chisholm. After almost 10 years of helping other politicians run for office, which enabled her to learn the business of politics, Chisholm announced her candidacy for state assembly. In 1964, she was elected assemblywoman in the state of New York. Chisholm was a vocal advocate for working class people, introducing bills for their benefit. Four years later, she made another daring move and entered the race for United States Congress. No black woman had ever won before. In 1968, her unprecedented attempt for this powerful position raised the eyebrows of many and drew national attention. Her win was heavily covered in the national press. As a freshman member of Congress, Chisholm showed that she would stand up. She went before the caucus of Democratic House members to object to her assignment on the Farm Committee. They agreed to transfer her to another committee. She also pushed for a public health care plan. The issue of public school reform was also something Chisholm felt needed addressing. As a congresswoman, she was a highly sought after speaker. In 1972, Chisholm earned more than $30,000 in lecture fees more than any other member of Congress. She accepted speaking engagements at Spelman College, Howard University, and many other colleges. In one of her addresses to the historically black all-female college, she told them to have stamina. Chisholm said, The road is tough if you are black and a woman. In Congress, Chisholm questioned aspects of the American way of life, and the press was there because of her name recognition. Chisholm also attacked black politicians that sold out their constituents. She often talked to youth to help them prepare for a competitive society. In 1972, Chisholm was again the focus of national attention after announcing her candidacy for President of the United States. This announcement made her the first black woman to run for the presidency. I stand before you today as a candidate for the Democratic nomination for the presidency of the United States of America. She was a very, very courageous person. Um, you know, being the first female to really aspire to be the president of the United States in her time was absolutely uh, courageous. Um, she was just a dynamic, dynamic person. The media watched her very closely. And I want to be president of the United States, and she got out and campaigned for president. So young people sh should not be afraid to dream and not be afraid to dare. Some felt she shouldn't run. But Chisholm stood her ground and focused on running a successful campaign. 
One big reason, because she was a woman. Said Chisholm, Of my two handicaps, being female put many more obstacles in my path than being black. As her campaign moved throughout the country, she stressed in many speeches that nothing is more important than solving the domestic problems of poverty, ignorance, racism, and hunger. She made headlines nationwide. How do you feel this morning? Oh, I, I feel wonderful. It's, a, it's one of the most uh, marvelous things that can happen in our country at this moment. During the election, Chisholm was quoted in the Atlanta Journal-Constitution newspaper that if elected, she would reopen investigations into the assassinations of John and Robert Kennedy, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., and other slain political leaders. She made national headlines in the Muhammad Speaks newspaper for saying she believed the Palestinians had a right to live in quality living conditions and not in the ghettos. She stood for mutual cooperation between Palestinians and Jews in Israel, according to the article. For the first time in the history of this nation, a person of color and a woman at that is running for the highest office of this land. As a member of the House of Representatives, she submitted bills to help working people. For example, Chisholm supported national health care and she introduced legislation in Congress. After her failed attempt to win the presidency, Chisholm was the subject of an intense federal probe into alleged illegal campaign practices. On the checklist of charges were misused funds and not keeping financial records. A newspaper reported Chisholm blasted the investigation, charging that she was the target of a White House vendetta because she was politically independent and opposed most of President Nixon's administration policies. All charges were later dropped. After losing, Chisholm returned to Congress. She kept up her commitment to people issues and addressed hunger, health care, and war. The style in which she brought out these concerns drew more national media attention. Throughout the year, Chisholm continued to be a highly sought after public speaker. In the Congress, she stayed committed to ensuring that people's issues were not forgotten. In February of 1975, major newspapers covered her fight in Congress against Congress's vote not to increase food stamps. Chisholm said millions of Americans needed food stamps because of a slumping economy and rising unemployment. She went a step further and said more stamps may be necessary if things don't get better. Shirley Chisholm, by standing up against some of the good old boys, even within the Democratic Party, stood up against some of the African-American political leaders, said that I'm unbought and I will not be bought. Uh, she said in no uncertain terms that I'm my own person, that I'm independent, I'm going to fight, and I'm going to tell the truth. During her career, she stood for unity of black elected officials in Congress and was active in the Congressional Black Caucus. Her political career was filled with memorable moments. In 1977, she was the first black elected official to meet with President Carter. She was voted one of the most admired women in the Good Housekeeping annual poll of the world's 10 most admired women. I think she inspired an entire generation of women, white women, but especially black women, all women, to stand up. She injected the political system with the belief that women could be strong, viable national leaders. You know, it took Shirley Chisholm to set the tone to encourage other women to run for Congress, uh, to encourage uh, Walter Mondale even to put a woman on his ticket for vice president. Chisholm talked about the hardships of being a woman and black in America, often saying being a woman was the most difficult. I think she stood for what was right. Uh, she was very um, uh, adamant about her positions as it related to what she felt was right. And she, uh, as I recall, uh, she would exemplify that all the time. I mean, it was never a moment when she didn't uh, stress and push for uh, things that were right. Uh, she was um, really um, 
uh, a pioneer, you might say, as a female uh, in, in, in uh, pushing forth that, that concept, that idea of everybody uh, could do the job, whether you're male or female. And so, uh, you know, that's where I remember mostly about her. I think she had a tremendous amount of respect by her colleagues in, in Congress. In a news article in 1981, Chisholm called for an end to apartheid in South Africa after a trip there to see the horrible living conditions for blacks. As the first black woman elected to Congress and the first black woman to run for president, she made political history. But she made her permanent imprint even stronger by her courage to address events that affected workers, blacks, women, and children. In 1977, she remarried a former New York State Assemblyman. During this period, she gave indications that her time in Washington would soon end. In 1982, Chisholm retired from Congress as a member of the House of Representatives. I really felt that she was setting a very, very high standard. Uh, she, uh, I've never heard one negative point uh, about anything that she had been involved with um, at all. I mean, that to me was a very, very uh, positive um, thing to, uh, you know, to portray. Uh, uh, honesty in government. Uh, if you believe in something, uh, then go with it. You know, go uh, do everything you possibly could to convince others uh, of the right way. So I think she had, she displayed uh, high ethics, uh, good morals, and uh, just good stamina as a as a human being and as a female human being. Like I say, I just think she. Um, was really, really, truly uh, courageous. After retirement, Chisholm continued public speaking and taught at Spelman College. In Albany, I first saw something I have since seen in Washington. Men whose conscience urged them to one course of action were forced to take another by the political dynamics of a situation. There is little place in the political scheme of things for an independent, creative personality, for a fighter, Anyone who takes that role must pay a price. The hour has come in America that all of us in this room can no longer be the passive recipients of whatever the politics of a nation may decree for us as citizens within this realm. But if we have the courage of our convictions, if we desire to make a contribution to make this nation bring about the fulfillment of the American dream so that it is meaningful to every segment in America.